Hi, I'm Brian Pre tutoring High School Biology. Today's topic, worms. Worms look to be the next evolutionary step from Nidarians, so we're going to tackle that now. First up, flatworms, also known as platy helminth bees. If you want to remember that, plat, flat, it works. And yes, flatworms are quite flat. Now, one thing you should know about these is, is that they're acelomates. That means they don't have a body cavity, a coelom. Is this important? Yes, we have a body cavity and that's our entire digestive tract. It allows for a lot of complexity that these flatworms don't have. Their circulation, their respiration, their excretion, it's all done by diffusion. They don't have the coelom that they need for that. So, if you have too much waste in it, it diffuses out. If you have too much of anything in the flatworm, it diffuses out. If you have too little, it'll diffuse in. That's pretty much how flatworms work. The only exception is they have these things called flame cells that'll shoot out too much water. There's very little active transport in these guys. Alright, other than that, they have ganglia, which are small clusters of nerves, function kind of like brains, but they're just not complex enough for, well, really being brains. They also have eye spots, which help them detect small changes in light. Most flatworms are hermaphrodites, so you get two of them together and they can reproduce. Any two of them. However, a lot of them can also do asexual reproduction in the form of binary fission. They'll basically split off into two flatworms. Fairly unusual for multicellular organisms, but yes, they do it. Next up, roundworms, or nematodes. They're pseudocelomates. That means they have kind of a body cavity, but it's not as developed as a real coelom. These guys do have a digestive tract. They have a mouth and an anus. It goes in the mouth, it comes out the anus. Remember, with flatworms, a lot of that was just diffusion. But even with roundworms, circulation, respiration, and excretion to some degree is done through diffusion. They have several ganglia, several clusters of nerves. They're a little more developed than flatworms, and they also have sexes unlike flatworms, which are hermaphroditic. Not so exciting, but roundworms actually are often parasitic. Maybe you could consider them a little more developed than some because of that. But anyway, on to the next thing. This is a big jump, though, evolutionary speaking. This is segmented worms, annelids. These are real coelomates. They have coelums. They have digestive tracts. They have a closed circulatory system. That's pretty cool, because it used to be everything was done by diffusion. Now they actually have a circulatory system. Their movement helps, their undulation helps move blood throughout their entire system to their internal organs. These are heart-like structures. They have gills. They can actually take in oxygen. They have a brain, which is pretty new. I mean, it used to just be ganglia. Yes, they also have sexes. They also have a more developed digestive system. Some of them have crops and gizzards. They're kind of like stomachs, actually. They help churn things up, especially earthworms, which, well, they get a lot of earth in there. Of course you want to churn that up. And they'll also have these nephridia along the segments, which help eliminate waste, even in addition to the anus. These things are very highly developed, and that's what you need to know about segmented worms. To recap, worms look to be the next step up, evolutionarily speaking, from the Darwins. Flatworms, also known as platyhelminthines, are acelomates. That means they don't have a body cavity. Circulation, respiration, and excretion are accomplished through diffusion. Flatworms will have several ganglia, clusters of nerves, and eye spots. Sometimes they'll only have one ganglia, though. A lot of these are hermaphroditic, and also they can perform asexual reproduction through binary fission. Next up, brownworms, nematodes. These are pseudocelomates. That means they have like a body cavity, but not quite so highly developed. They do have a digestive tract, they have a mouth and an anus. However, some excretion is also accomplished through diffusion. Circulation and respiration are still accomplished through diffusion. They also have sexes and several ganglia. Segmented worms, or annelids, are true coelomates. They have a body cavity. They have a closed circulatory system with several heart-like structures that will help pump blood along with their own undulation. They have gills, a brain, sexes, a more developed digestive system with sometimes even a crop and a gizzard, and several nephridia, which help eliminate waste along the body. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.